Hi, welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Wisdom. I'm your host, Anise Kisselbash. Today's episode, I want to talk to you about how to stay calm when you are surrounded by chaos. The key in this situation to help you find your level of calm, one that you can make the best decisions for you, your business, we need to restore a sense of balance. I'm not saying fake positivity. When you, when you can quiet that fear, you'll get some balance back. So instead of making decisions from a place of fear and scarcity, you make decisions from a place of balance and abundance. So here are nine things you can do to help you restore a sense of calm and balance in your life. Some will resonate, some won't. So take the ones that do and leave the ones that don't. Before continuing, let me quickly address the naysayers or that little voice in your head that might tell you, Stay calm, be positive, think positive. That's not going to do or change anything. It won't solve any problems. In this unique situation, staying calm will do you the world of good. When you're stressed, you release cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Quick bursts of cortisol in your body is, is useful in life-threatening situations. If you're being chased by a lion, it's great because it gives you the strength to run like the wind. You might get caught in the end, but at least you gave it a good try. If the house is on fire, you'll suddenly get the strength to, to pounce and jump out the window and land to your safety. If you run out of toilet roll, you can leg it to the nearest supermarket faster and get that last bit of toilet roll. In life-threatening situations, cortisol is useful in quick bursts. Extended periods of psychological stress weakens your immune system. Particularly unique to this situation, published in Health Psychology, found that social isolation and feelings of loneliness weaken the immune system even further. Depending on when you're watching this video, but in this unique um, virus situation, we have to self-isolate. So if you're at home on your own, it can make you feel more vulnerable and more lonely, which can weaken your immune system. That's why it's especially relevant in this unique situation to help you find some calm None of what I'm about to share with you will work unless you first stop the attacks on your immune system. Imagine for a moment, someone's attacking you physically and you've got cuts and bruises and so on, and you cannot tend to those cuts and bruises until you first get rid of the attacker. And the key attackers in this case are the news and social media. Now, yes, the news is useful, but we don't need to be inundated. Same with social media. It's the worst place to be when there is some disaster. I've already done an entire episode on how to deal with negative news and Whiskey's just uh, decided to sit on my lap. Got anything to say? Oh, yes, I did tell them the link. She said the link is below for the episode negative news making you sick. You will notice the difference. Now, the second step, when you feel anxiety and stress. Spend just two or three minutes simply watching your thoughts. Watch them like they're little butterflies flying away in your, in your mind. When you're no longer caught up in the thoughts, they loosen their grip on you. And the key is when you watch your thoughts, don't try and stop them, don't try and judge them, simply watch them and accept them. So it's okay to think those thoughts and feel those feelings. I'm not suggesting you deny them, just don't dwell in them. them. So after you've done steps one and two, which is stopping the attacks on the outside, and then step two is stopping the attacks on the inside, which are your own thoughts, the third step is about helping you lose yourself. Now, when I talk about yourself, the self is the self-absorption, the constant chatter in your head. And one way of losing yourself is by engaging in activities and experiences that you love. Maybe you like art or drawing, well, if so, Spend 10, 20 minutes a day just losing yourself in art. If you're doing household chores, use those as a moment to really immerse yourself in the activity. When you're folding the laundry, feel every fold as you fold them. 
instead of being lost in your thoughts, like when you're folding the clothes, you're thinking about your to-do list or an email you need to reply or a proposal you, you need to prepare, you're just there and you're folding the items and you can feel them and you're fully present in that moment. That's what being mindful is about, really. Maybe you play an instrument? Be in that moment while you're doing it. So if you like cooking and baking, for example, lose yourself in, in cooking and baking. But while you're cooking and baking, immerse yourself in the activities. Pay attention to everything you're doing. Do you like dancing? Spend 10 minutes dancing like a five-year-old, like no one's watching. So you don't have to go and sit and gong bells to practice this thing called mindfulness. You just have to pay attention to the activities you're doing day to day. If you love your kids, okay, I'm guessing that's a yes. Play with them, play with your dog or cat. Patty cake, patty cake, whiskey poo. Patty cake, patty cake, whiskey poo. Patty cake, patty cake, make me food. Call or video chat with your friends. Now, I'm not talking about chatting with them on social media. I recommend taking it out of a social media context. Better to do it on one of those one-to-one -one chat messenger systems like Signal, for example, where you can have a one-to-one -one conversation with them. That's better than being in the sludge of social media right now. If you like learning, then lose yourself every day in learning a new skill. Maybe you want to sharpen your photography skills, go and take a, an online course in photography. Or... And finally, give the small beauties in life more of your attention and your awareness. Well, if you see a budding flower, don't just walk past it, just give it a second longer of your attention. Watch and appreciate the blossoming of this new life on this magical place we call Earth. So the key to finding calm when you're surrounded by chaos is to accept the things you can't change and change the things you can. The things you can change is where you focus and keep your attention. As long as we keep our attention focused and obsessed and consuming the news and the negativity on the outside, we will never feel calm and peace on the inside. So before you go, I want you to do one thing. Here's a challenge for you because then you'll get more out of this when you take action. What loving thing will you lose yourself in in the coming days and the coming weeks to help you stay calm? Share in the comments below. I'd love to know. If you found this helpful, please share. I think people really need your help right now. 
And if you found this helpful, maybe they will too. Thanks for watching Coffee and Wisdom. I'm Anise Kizzelbash, and I will see you in another episode.